Today I'm going to show you guys a super fast and easy method to color grade footage from your Pocket 4K. Can't make YouTube videos without Mike and Ike's. Gosh, I really need a haircut. Now I don't know about you guys, but when I first got my Pocket 4K cinema camera, I was really excited about the insane dynamic range and the color science of Blackmagic and all their cameras, but I was really disappointed when I imported the footage and started color grading it because I had never color grade log footage before. For those of you who don't know, log is a color space that a lot of cinema cameras and mirrorless cameras these days shoot in to preserve the most dynamic range, but it basically means that you're given a really flat, desaturated image. It's used to maintain the most detail in the highlights and shadows and increase the camera's overall dynamic range, but that does mean the files you are given are going to look really flat and desaturated. So it was quite a process learning how to color grade log footage, and it took me a while before I got an image that I was happy with. But I finally landed on the method which I'm going to show you guys in this video that will work in any editing software and is super quick and easy to do. So let's go ahead and hop into the computer and I'll show you exactly how to do it. I have four different shots I've imported into a timeline here. Now I'm going to show you how to do this in Final Cut Pro, but like I said before, this will work in any editing software. So first I have just a few shots of some leaves that I recorded out in our garden. Then I have a quick shot of me playing guitar on a different day just to show, you know, some different color and different lighting scenarios. And then another one of me just staring at nothing because I need some skin tones. Now to grade this flat log footage, we first need to transform it into the Rec. 709 color space, which is the color space that most people and I was used to working in before I started working with log. So to do this, we're going to use a LUT by Blackmagic Design that's made for converting the Pocket 4K's log to uh, more closer to Rec. 709. It's not exactly to Rec. 709, which is why I'm having to do this whole video, but the LUT will give us a good starting point to make further adjustments. Now, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how you can get this LUT for free, but for right now, let me go ahead and just apply it to these shots so you can see what it looks like. In Final Cut Pro, I'm going to go ahead and drag on the custom LUT effect. All right, so now we can see the effect this has done to our image, and it's definitely added a lot more contrast. If I go ahead and open uh, my scopes with Command-7, you can see that before, uh, everything's you know really compressed on the waveform. When you apply the LUT, things get stretched out a lot more. Um, but this still isn't really a usable image in my opinion. The main problem is that it is still too desaturated. So what we're going to do is, on top of that, add a color correction. The way you do this will depend on what editing software you're using, but in Final Cut Pro, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a color board. I'm going to increase the master saturation by 8%, the shadows by 15%, and the highlights by 15%. Now, these are just the settings that I found looks best to my eye, but you may have a different preference, of course, and it may work differently in your editing software, but the idea is that you just wanna add a bit more saturation. Now, this shot is already properly exposed, so any adjustments I made after this would just be more preferences on the look of how I wanted this particular shot to be. But just for reference, what I usually do is bring up the highlights and maybe lower the midtones a bit to add some contrast in there, and then bring down the shadows to match. If we compare that to just the pure LUT from Blackmagic, you can see that our just those few adjustments we made really helped the image pop. And that is actually it. At this point, you're basically done and you're ready to go ahead and move on to the color grading section. I guess this is more color correction than color grading, just getting into that Rec. 709 color space. And then after that, you can make any further adjustments for you know however the footage needs to look depending on your project. Now, once you've added the LUT and added the saturation, I suggest you go ahead and save it as a preset so that you don't have to do those settings every single time. You can just drag on a preset and it will go ahead and apply those effects for you. So then you can start grading immediately. You can do this in many different ways. In Final Cut Pro, you just hit this little save effects preset button on the bottom right, and then you can name the preset and save it to a particular folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you an example of coloring this shot manually at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and add another color board. And then I think for this, I might just push a little bit of teal into the midtone just to cool it off a little bit and maybe into the shadows as well, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add a hue saturation curves and go ahead and select my greens. And I think I'm gonna push them a little bit more toward the blue side and cool them off a bit. Now that's of course a very subtle grade. Now you could go a lot heavier with that, but for me, I think this image looks pretty good. Now for the second shot, we can basically do the exact same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy over all my effects and you can see we already get a super usable image. Now, of course, these were both exposed shot within seconds of each other, so they're exposed basically the same, but if you wanted to, you could then go in and adjust um, your exposure as need be. Actually, I think I might bring down the midtones just a little bit 
and maybe bring up the highlights on this. Uh, make it just a little bit more contrasty. All right, now let's go ahead and move on to the third shot, which is a completely different lighting uh, setting. This was shot around golden hour, so it's much more you know warm lighting than on that cloudy day. Oh, guys, guys. Before recording this, I set the bit rate way too high, and I just lost a bunch of footage because the card filled up, which wasn't supposed to happen. All right, you know, let's do this. All right, so for this next shot of me playing the guitar, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did before. So go ahead and drag on that black magic LUT and then add some overall saturation as well as some extra saturation in the shadows and highlights. All right, now exposure wise, this image is looking a little hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring down those highlights ever so slightly and then bring down the shadows. All right, I like the way that looks. Now, once you've gotten to this point, you can of course do whatever normal grading things you like to do. So if there's a specific LUT that you like to use, you can totally use that in addition to the black magic LUT. So I actually am going to do that right now. There's a certain LUT by Potato Jet, his silver-like LUT, which I really like, but it is a little heavy. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring down the strength of that to maybe 80% as well as go back into that color board and maybe bring up my mid-tones and shadows. I find often it crushes it just a little too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring those up. But already right there, we have a really good looking image. I'm gonna do the same thing to this next clip, apply those base settings, and then apply that Silver Lake LUT. Now is just a quick final tip for this process. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make sure your skin tones are uh, correct in each of your shots. First off, you're gonna wanna grab a shape mask and put that over your image, and then go ahead and just restrict that mask to part of your skin. I'm just gonna use my face here. Now, if you open your scopes and then choose vector scope, you should get something that like this. And on the vector scope, you should have a skin tone indicator line right here. If you don't have that, you may have to enable it. For instance, in Final Cut Pro, you have to go and hit show skin tone indicator. But once you do that, this is a really good way to make sure your skin tones are lining up correctly. As you can see here, they are not. <laughs> they are very much a little bit more toward yellow than the skin tone. You usually want them either on the line or to the right of the line ever so slightly. So to fix this, what we can do is go ahead and add hue saturation uh, curves, and then we're going to go ahead and choose the hue of our skin. And we're gonna go ahead and just push that a little bit more toward red a few notches until it lines up more on the line there. Now we can go back and turn off that mask and see what it did to the rest of our image. Now, if you look before and after, our skin tones are much more accurately um, lined up with what they are in real life. And now with that skin tone judgment, this image is basically finished. So that is basically it. That is the workflow I use to color grade my Pocket 4K image, and it's just what I found to be the fastest and easiest and simplest to do. So just as a review, we start off by transforming our log footage into Rec. 709, and we do that by adding the Blackmagic film to extended video LUT, and then add some extra saturation. And then from that point, we just do our basic color correcting, which is, you know, exposure, white balance, stuff like that. And then after all that, we can go ahead and add our creative looks, whether that's through a LUT or just, you know, custom grading. And at the very end, as a final touch, we want to go ahead and verify that our skin tones are lining up where they should be. All right, now before we wrap things up, let me go ahead and show you how you can get that black magic LUT. Unfortunately, the only way to get at least the latest version of it is through DaVinci Resolve and downloading it from their website. If you don't know, DaVinci Resolve is Blackmagic's jack of all trades software. It's super useful and there's a free version you can get from their website that includes all of their custom LUTs. So to download DaVinci Resolve, you just need to go to blackmagicdesign.com slash product slash DaVinci Resolve. There's a link in the video description. You'll get a page like this and just go ahead and hit download and then choose a DaVinci Resolve 16. Once you go ahead and get that downloaded, go ahead and open it up. Once you've done that, you should get something like this. Go ahead and just open an empty project. Then on the bottom here, go to the color tab, then hit LUTs on the top left, and click this little button here to open the sidebar. From this menu, choose Blackmagic Design, and then find Blackmagic Pocket 4K Film to extend video V4, or whatever the latest version is that you can find. Once you've found that, go ahead and right click it, and then choose Reveal in Finder. This will open a new finder window and show you the location of that .cube file. And from here, you can go ahead and copy it over to one of your personal LUT folders or import it directly into your editing software. All right, well, I think that is about it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching it. I hope this really helped you. It was really kind of frustrating for me when I first started grading uh, log footage, but using this method really helped me to get much more consistent, uh, good grades out of my Pocket 4K. So I hope it can do the same for you. If you have a question about anything I did in this video, be sure to drop a comment. I'm Josiah, thanks for watching.
think we're done. Good job, everyone. Go home. Just kidding. It's just me. Because, you know, quarantine and all.